Isaiah chapter 39. Malachi, the 39th book, the last book of the Old Testament. At the time, Mordach Badanon, the son of Babylon, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah. For he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered. News gets around. Also, like I told you, if you go back and uh, check 2 Kings 24 and 25, the sign of the, the sundial being set back, that got their attention. Because Babylon, Babylonians were stargazers. When something happened in heavens, they were okay. And they go running to Jerusalem. Funny how they go running to the God of all gods. I mean, if this event happens in the heavens, and the heavens were their gods, God has power over the gods. And he, again, he finds out that Hezekiah was sick and recovered. Hezekiah was glad of them and showed them the house of the precious thing, the silver, the gold, and the spices. Spices were a high, big deal thing. Even the Queen of Sheba, when she came to Solomon, brought spices. I mean, you didn't have grocery stores back then. And there were certain spices. I mean, they had to come from China. They had to come from India. And that's not like you get in a car or a truck and, you know, 18 wheeler and honk, honk, here we go. That's not how it was. It took days. It took months. It took years for the trading to get through. And the precious ointment, and all the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominion, that Hezekiah showed them not. He's bragging. And he's also hanging Judah's neck. Look in a minute, well, by the time he finishes this short chapter. Then came Isaiah the prophet and the king Hezekiah. You know, here, here, comes, the, here comes trouble. Here comes the prophet of God. What did I do? You know, I'm just living my life, just bragging, and look at everything I got. I, I didn't do nothing wrong. And said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country. And that shows up 18 times in your Bible, far country. And Jesus uses that in, as a parable. In his parables and his stories, he said, and, and the, the owner went off to a far country. Unto me, even from Babylon. All right, so these men are from Babylon. Then said he, this is the Isaiah, what have they seen in thy house? And Hezekiah answered, now Hezekiah doesn't know he's sinking himself. You get a man to speak and he's going to hang himself eventually. Isaiah just asked three questions. What said these men? And where did they come from? And what have they seen? That's it. And Hezekiah answered. I mean, today all I did was ask a couple questions. You got to ask questions. You got to find out things that are going around or going around about you. Questions are smart. Anybody who doesn't ask questions are not smart because they don't learn things. Then said he, What have they seen in thy house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in my house have they seen. And that's true. That's very much true. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. He gave them the museum tour. This is this, this is my armory, this is the temple, this is my safe, this is my palace, this is my bedroom, this is my living room, this is my kitchen, this is everything we got. Don't look so bad. Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Uh -oh. Behold, the days come that all that is in thy house. And that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day. So there's been treasures and treasures and treasures mounted up since David. It says in the time of Solomon that, that silver was just like rocks. 
So all this treasure. And there are yet more kings coming. Shall be carried to Babylon. And that is true. You find that at the end of 2 Chronicles. You find that at the end of Jeremiah. Nebuchadnezzar comes into the land three times. The third time he sacks the city completely. And you're given a list of everything that's gone, but the Ark of the Covenant is not listed. So what these guys are doing is, I don't know if they were doing it right then and there. I don't know. Or if they had a memory. Is they're walking around with Hezekiah and they're either mental or actually writing things down. Let's see. This is two pillars. Raising sea. Lions, four this way, four that way, four this way, and four that way. Golden tables, ten. Golden candlesticks, ten. He keeps his money here. He's got this kind of weapons in this place. He's got towers in this. They're writing or keeping everything out, which eventually will get written down. So when Nebuchadnezzar plans his attack in, in Jerusalem and Judah, he knows exactly what they have, and he knows what treasures are there, and he orders the troops to come on, because this is what Isaiah says. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And then when, Babel, when Nebuchadnezzar comes in and after the third attack, it's wiped out. It's gone. Do you know where you can find that list? We read it tonight in Ezra. When Darius opens up the, the treasure house of Babylon, he returns to the Jews going back to Jerusalem. Everything he said that Nebuchadnezzar had. You can find this list in Isaiah 39. You can, I forget which chapter it is, but you can find it in Isaiah. It says the silver, the gold, the bowls, and Ezra. Did you know that you can find Isaiah 39 in Ezra? At least as far as the temple is concerned. And Dyrus orders it all back to be returned back to God. Not a thing was lost. Even if they had a drunken party the last night of Babylon with the Lord's cups and, and worshiping the gods of wood, hay, and all that other junk, it all went back to where it started. You read that in Ezra, you read it in Isaiah, and you read it in Jeremiah, and you, write, you read it in the last chapter of Second Chronicles. Now, how's that? God is more important with the stuff that are his than, than the birthday of Jesus Christ. You know, when Jesus said, And no man shall pluck him out of my father's hand, he knows exactly how many born-again Christians there are. And when he calls us home at the rapture, not one is going to be left behind. You know, it says the woman that lost a coin. The lost sheep went out and found them and gathered it all together. You know, if you're a spoon at the table, if you're a a a, a, a pitchfork for the meal, if you're a pruning horn, if you're a little I don't know the trimmers for the for the wicks of the can, you're a bed plan. If you're a little labor for, for the, 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 the washing, whatever you are, tongue, whatever vessel you are, every vessel that belongs to God will be taken home. I think that's why Paul says we are vessels. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, this is, this is going to be great, great, great grandsons. I forget how many kings are left in the land. Shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs 
Now who is that? Shadrach, Meshach, Nebuchadnezzar, and Daniel. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Nebuchadnezzar are mentioned not by name, but before Nebuchadnezzar is even set on the throne. There they are. Daniel chapter 1. There they are. How's that for prophecy? Notice it says eunuchs. In the palace of the king of Babylon. What? They shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Where was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Right there in the palace and being taught. Stood before King Nebuchadnezzar and did their duties. Daniel was a third of the three presidents. Prophecy fulfilled. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, this is really off the wall. Good is the word of the Lord. Doesn't that sound great? Which thou hast spoken. Doesn't that? Wow. Amen. Glory to God. He said, moreover. All right. He says, good is the word of the Lord, which thou hast spoken. Amen. Glory to God. And we get, he said, moreover. He, go, he continues to say on. For there shall be peace and truth in my day. He don't care about his future family. He don't care about the future of Jerusalem. He was just told that Jerusalem's going to be sacked of everything. Oh, word of God's great. It's not going to happen during my time. That's interesting. That's selfish. If he was going to die over here in, in 38.1 and, and he prayed and wept before the Lord, wouldn't you think if he would have wept and prayed before the Lord in verse 8 or between 7 and 8, do you think that the Lord would maybe have done something? He already had a revival in the land. Why wouldn't he pray for a, a constant revival? And continue to be right but now it's going to happen later on. And that's what Christians think. It's down the road. It ain't going to happen in my time. A lot of people think with America. Well, America's going to fail. It ain't going to happen in my time. Don't be too sure. There's not going to be, uh, there shall be peace and truth in my days. Down here, this is Memorial Day, Daytona Beach. Two people thought, hey, it's going to be peace and wonderful times in their life. And they went down to the beach and they woke up in eternity somewhere. They hear a gospel message, oh, that's going to be that's going to be great down the road, but I've got peace and time right now. I've got one, and you don't. You'll die. And you'll die before your time. He was spared of death in 38. When he, when he hears about death and destruction and, and sacking and all that and eunuchs. You know when you hear the word eunuch with Babylon, you think in your head a surgery. And they didn't have anesthesia. They didn't have, you know, an operating rooms and stuff like that. But, as long, long as I've got peace, long as there's truth in my day, and you need to pray for your church for tomorrow because you don't know what tomorrow will hold. You need to pray for the young people of your church. But I tell you right now, the young people today in, in the churches everywhere, they're not being taught the truth. Even though they have a King James 1611 Bible, there are outside programs, there are outside events, there are outside activities that are the world and that are sin, and they'll just bring it more into the church and swipe out the good stuff, and Satan will come and take everything that, what does it say? That thy fathers have laid up. And as Jerusalem was sacked and destroyed, 
by by that uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, so will the church be sacked and destroyed. Paul says it's going to end with, with apostles. Listen, if the, if the Lord tarries, as far as we see church services and church building, they won't be around. You'll have to go underground or house to house. Oh, boy. Oh. You mean you couldn't go to the church building for the church service? What do you do with a bunch of guys who sit in Afghanistan sitting in a jail today for being Christians and it's Sunday and they can't go to church? Oh, wicked them. They didn't go to church service. Oh, my. Huh? Richard Rombard tells us that they would have to meet in fields. They had to meet in all these different places. And you never knew when authority would be there. And then you end up in jail. You gotta be careful. You gotta pray. It may be peace and truth and constitution today. One day we know that Jerusalem will be sacked. It will be burned. It will be destroyed. And they will be in Babylon for seventy years. And you know what happens when when seventy years the pastor and the deacons. And those that are the adults in the church, you know what happens in 70 years? They're dead. And you know what happens during that messy time of the 70 years? Ezra says they start marrying people who they're not supposed to be married. And they have strange children. And they don't know the language anymore. I guess they have new Bibles. They don't have the Elizabeth English. They got all modern, up to date. And the children don't know nothing about God. Listen, that's the churches today. But as long as I got peace in my time, that, that, that's the selfish thinking. You need to look at the children in your church, and you need to pray for the parents, and you need to pray for those children. Because if the Lord tarries, they are tomorrow's witnesses. And the world is trying to blow out the candle. The world is trying to darken them. Don't settle for peace in my days. Hezekiah should have prayed for his children, should have prayed for his child, prayed for his grandchildren, prayed for his great grandchildren. He already had a great deliverance of prayer, 38, and we studied that last night. I think I think if he would have prayed, it just stops there, that's it. And we go on to a whole different subject. You know, we've jumped from Hezekiah, we've jumped over the Babylonian captivity, we've jumped over Ezra, we've jumped over Nehemiah, and we end up with, with John the Baptist. At the end of a period.